look what just came in the mail this is going to allow me to add Apple CarPlay to my Maserati so I'm going to be taking this on do it yourself projects we'll see how involved this is and if we're successful or not stay tuned What's going on? It's your boy, Fly Car Guy, back with another video. Today, I'm gonna be undertaking one of the projects I talked about in one of my last videos. I found, oh, let me turn into some sun here so you can see a little bit better. I found a device I could use to add Apple CarPlay and a touchscreen to the current infotainment system in the Maserati that's kind of old and outdated so I happen to be on a forum remember I told you guys about forums on one of my other videos I happened to be on a forum and found someone that had purchased this product through a group buy but it was too complicated so they decided that they didn't want to try to do the installation themselves and they had it sitting down in their office so I made an offer and he gave me an even better deal than I offered. So I said, why not for, for that kind of money? Might as well give it a try. So today we're gonna to see how easy or hard it is to add Apple CarPlay to my Maserati. Uh, this kit works on the Gran Turismo as well. So I believe it's like all of the cars from like 07 and up or something like that, or 08 and up if they have a certain head unit. But anyways, let's get into it. I'll show you what came with the kit. Okay, so what's gonna make me the most nervous about this install is the piano wood. I'm super scared of scratching the wood, so gonna have to be very careful. I don't know if you guys have ever looked up the price of replacing some of these, like these panel pieces here, like all of these panel pieces are hella expensive to replace. I think this one was like $1,800 or something just for this 
surround or maybe even 2,000 so that's gonna be the part that's gonna scare me so I'm gonna get a bunch of like soft cloths I have a huge one here that I'm gonna lay down on stuff as to try to make sure nothing gets uh, scratched in here um, so apparently there's screws under the cup holders one up here and one under here and then this whole thing will lift up so we can kind of pull this back and then it should expose some more screws apparently there's like uh pull this clock out and there's screws behind here and then pull out this and there's two screws behind here and then the whole thing should come forward so we're gonna check that out right now so i'm gonna just dig like does this whole oh okay I don't know if I got that on camera, but that whole thing just kind of pulled out. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. Man, that's scary. Um, sometimes the bottom of these cup holders come out and there's a screw underneath. So, let's see. This is a plastic trim tool. To, yep. So, there we go. So, I'll pull these out. It's rubber, but it's kind of hard. Okay, there we go. And it's a Maserati. Okay, so of course, they're Torx. Of course, why would they use normal bolts in a Maserati? So, as I said, let me go get my toolbox because I can see I'm going to need some Torx and some non-conventional stuff here. So, I'll be right back. Okay, we got those two bolts out. So, now apparently, you're supposed to be able to pry this out and let's see if it comes out that easy oh my gosh these little bits that have these plastic that gets sticky and stuff in some of these cars my none of my stuff is sticky yet thank goodness but to me it makes everything still seem like it's so delicate okay so that does come off just fine and then there's a little come on focus a little tab here that you press on to or you lift up this tab here to slide it off so let's do that and of course it's two separate plugs so there's another little little tab holding on here that I'm gonna have to stick like a some kind of a pick tool in here to lift this up to get this little release this here to get this out because there's no like release tab on this one. So I took my pick tool and basically stuck it into here, stuck it down, and then pulled on the end at the same time to release it. You can see there's like a little bump here that has to be released and then that will come out so next there's supposed to be something up here and this up here so i don't know how this comes out i'm just gonna try to pull oh so i just grabbed it at the end here and pulled that out that was easy and there you go last little screw is down there and there so i'm gonna undo those two and this whole thing should lift up this whole section here so I'm not sure if it's just my car I tried pulling up this whole thing and it didn't seem to be budging so I took this tool and ran it against this edge and I don't know if you can hear that but it's like there's a sticky it's like I don't know if it's just my car but it's like a sticky sound so I don't know if there's adhesive here or something but running my tool down it is freeing it up a bit so there's this side coming up okay so now it all pulled up and then i'm just gonna pull it up and towards it's hard doing it with one hand but i'm trying to record this for you so up and towards up and back i should say to the 
to the center console area here. So let's see what else is holding on down here because it seems like it's snagged on something. Maybe it's just the gear shift. Okay, give me a second to fool around here a bit and see what else it's caught on and then I'll be back. Okay, so there's nothing extra holding on to it. Just needed to angle it a bit more and pull it back. And it doesn't look like there's actually any adhesive. I guess just because it's never been taken apart before. Over time with the heat and stuff, it just got a bit bit sticky in between there. But yeah, not, no extra stuff holding it. Just those four screws that we took out before. Now, if you look at this, these are regular Phillips head screws. But they're kind of in a place where... A conventional screwdriver is not going to fit so you have to kind of angle it a bit I'm going to use my short screwdriver or if you had like an extension for a drill maybe even though I wouldn't really want to use a drill actually this is metal it wouldn't be too bad if you had an extension that you could uh that had a right angle you could get in there with but I'm just gonna use this stubby screwdriver and see if I can get it out this way so new plan um couldn't really get that much leverage with that screwdriver so I found if you lift this straight up you can actually fit a regular size screwdriver under there and try to screw it out so I'm gonna try to do it that way instead let's see how it goes so to get this clock out you should be able to just gently pry around the edges here sorry gently pry around the edges with this panel tool again try not to scratch anything pull this out and then there's a connector on the back just press the tab in to release it and then there's the two more screws up top and then that's it it's just the four screws sorry it's these ones in the corner here these black screws four screws that hold this whole face on that bottom screw though is stripped so i don't know how i'm going to get it out as you can see this whole thing is one piece and the unit is attached to it so i'm going to pull this whole thing forward and then start unbolting all of this stuff from the back side to incorporate the new stuff all right so this is the part where i'm just going to take a towel and kind of put it all along the front here because i don't want to be sorry not even look at the camera so this is the part where I'm gonna just grab a towel and kind of put it all along the front of this panel here because I'm behind the panel I'm behind the panel trying to unplug everything to loosen it and I don't want to mistakenly scratch something on the front end without even knowing it so just to be safe I'm gonna take this towel and kind of cover all the edges here and everything to try to make sure to protect this nice glossy wood finish lord forbid anything happens and i drop something or accidentally scratch something so let's just go ahead and do that and yeah nothing major here i'm just going through i'm just going to basically unplug anything i see to kind of free it up so if you want you might want to Maybe take a picture of how you have everything plugged in, but by the looks of it, most connectors look like they can only go in one place. So I'm just going to pull them and then work from there. So it looks like this right here. Let's see if it'll focus. There's like a little clip here that's attached. I don't know if you can see it right here where my thumb is. It looks like that's the main thing that's holding up the slack so I'm gonna try to loosen this clip pull this off and see if I get more slack so by unhooking that we're able to get enough leeway to pull the whole thing all the way away from the dashboard so now it's easier access to unplug all these plugs on the back so word of advice loosen that little clip at the back there and then it'll give you more um leverage to be able to unplug everything at the back and there you have it 
whole thing pulled out whole lot of connectors so now nah, I'm gonna take everything into the back here it's just easy to work here so now I have to undo these screws here to get this metal cage off and start to plug in and assess some of this stuff I have to put the screen on here too so We'll get to that. Uh, let me take one quick look at something though because apparently these boxes are supposed to have to fit down in here somewhere. So apparently the boxes look like they're gonna be able to fit behind this metal piece. There's this other box here and it looks like the two boxes will be able to stack up behind here. So no need to go into the glove box except for to run the USB through. So. That looks like there's plenty of space back there for the boxes, thank goodness. So once you take off those screws I showed, this whole piece releases from the frame. And then we need to take off these screws. These are also Phillips in order to get to the screen and attach the screen overlay. So this whole part detaches from that entire bezel that I just laid down on a soft piece of blanket there so it doesn't scratch. So we'll get to disassembly of the factory little screen here so that we can install the aftermarket one. Okay, sorry guys, I almost forgot to show you a step. I'm so used to just working and not recording. So if you can see on the side here, there's these little releases Let's see if it'll focus in. So basically, there's four of these release tabs here on the side. These things here, they just push in, they're spring-loaded. So they have a springy action to them. So when it's in the case, you just reach in and push in on those tabs and it releases the radio from the case. So you have to be able to pull that out to get to these last couple of screws to release the back. So now you can see this is completely out and my thumbprints on it. This material, this plastic is the worst for fingerprints and stuff. This plug just came out by pulling it out. There's no tab, so just pull it kind of hard and it came out. So now we can get these last two screws out and then get to the screen and attach the new screen over top. Oh, I was wrong. Still need to take out those screws down there. There's one on that side and one on this side hidden stuff but i did mention this in the manual i just wasn't paying attention so now that we release those last two everything comes apart here so we can get this part away from the cage so i'm gonna move the cage over here and then now we can get to the back of the main screen. So this is the main screen. So we're gonna be taking up this screen and then putting the overlay on top of it. So just to recap, this here this right there is the overlay. So we're gonna put this in over top of the factory screen so it's going to be like a touch screen overlay so i see you just take out these four here again they look like those uh torques those like type 4 torques or whatever i used to take out some of the other ones and then we should be good to go so we'll see okay so apparently if you have a gt Gran Turismo you'll have like this soft tape kind of stuff here you can peel up but on this car shout out to Nicholas I think his name is um let me double check because I want to give a proper shout out yeah shout out to Nicholas from the group that did my exact same car and he said he just put the screen on top of here which is what I was going to do anyways if I didn't hear back from him so in the Quattro de Porte the screen has this hard plastic bevel edge so you're just gonna put this overlay 
right on top of it. So I'm just gonna clean it first with a screen cleaner, clean it off, and then gonna have to tape it down to secure it with electrical tape and have to do it on much of the edge as possible otherwise you're gonna see the tape when you put the cover back on. So I have to try to follow this same edge here to make sure it doesn't show once it's installed. Okay, so I pulled the protective film off of both sides and this is the critical part is lining up the overlay. There's a low, there's a slim margin of tolerance for error and the touch screen will be not functioning properly or acting a bit weird. So I'm gonna, this looks good on all sides. I'm gonna try to secure it down with the electrical tape and then do a test fit to make sure the tape isn't showing on the other side once the bezel's back around it. All right, this is how it looks taped up. It's not exactly equal on each side. So I'm gonna do a test fit, check to see if it lines up okay, or if I have to take it all off and start again. So we'll see. So this came out a bit better. It's not perfect. I don't know if you can even tell on the camera, there's a little, little spot there, but the way it's sitting in the dash, I don't think you're going to be able to see it at all, so I'm not going to take it apart again. I'm going to leave it like this, and if it doesn't drive me crazy, I'll leave it. If it drives me crazy, then I'll take it all back out. Uh, there's also a couple of these little white spacers that had to get attached to the back here on the back of each of these screws so that the screen doesn't press down accidentally and cause any fouling or, or problems. So. I put one of those washers behind it. Now back over here and let's see what else we have to do. So next up we have this where we're basically going to take off this brown thing here. Let's see if we'll focus. I'm going to take this off here and then slide this ribbon into it and that will make the screen work. So basically you slide the ribbon in with the contacts down. So you pull this brown tab out, or it's black apparently on some of them, slide the ribbon in, tab with the contacts down, and then push the tab back in to secure it. And then just tape it up on the back here. I'm going to secure it and then oh, be careful with it because apparently these solders are delicate. So I'm going to tape that down. So I just went ahead and taped up anything that had an open contact or solder joints or anything. Anything that could short out, I just went ahead and taped it up so that nothing unexpectedly shorts out or comes loose when everything is plugged into the car. So just taped it up a bit to secure it and then we'll see how it goes going back into the car. So one thing I didn't take into consideration, this metal cage has a crossbar here. So these wires that I put here got caught on the crossbar. So I had to loosen it up and move the wires to the outside of the crossbar. On the Gran Turismo, I don't think it has this metal cage because it doesn't show it in the book, but in the Quattro Porte, there's a metal cage, so you have to look up for that crossbar. Now, should be able to slide the factory radio back in. So this is just gonna slide right into that opening there, and then we should be good where that's concerned. All right, so now we're getting to the nitty gritty here with all of this stuff. Um, you have to check these connectors. So these, one of them says LVDS in, if it'll focus and it won't. And one says out. So depending on if you have a Maserati Quattro Porte or a Gran Turismo, you notice that for Quattro Porte, in goes to in and out goes to out. Whereas 
on the Gran Turismo it's opposite in goes to out and out goes to in so just check these little things here because what will happen is you will get a blank display and you'll wonder why nothing's working so that's why it's very important to take your time with these things and read them over a few times so that you don't miss anything and have to go back so I'm just plugging in all the connectors now and then we'll see what else I have to connect and then try to get it powered on so this is kind of where the boxes are going to mount behind this brace here I decided to run the lead for the back of camera just in case I do hook it up so I don't have to take this whole thing apart again just hook up the back of camera so I gonna run the backup camera down here and just tuck it in under here until I'm ready for it and then I also have the microphone cable ran just to right here for now where do I put it right here just to have it to see if it works or whatever and then yeah I'm just gonna position the boxes and then start making some of these connections okay looks like a bit of mess right now but um oh did i forget a cable yeah maybe i did no that's not needed okay so basically you just match the colors and tie them together so like all the red wires go together all the black wires go together the yellow and green tie into the yellow and green so i just tied these all together i'll tie them up nice um another thing in the quattro porte because the control units are going behind the radio instead of behind the glove box like in the Gran Turismo, the cord isn't long enough. So you have this cord here that plugs into the auxiliary that's in the glove box. It's only a pigtail. And on the radio side, the wires are very short. Let me see if I can find them in here. They're right here. So the wires are like this short. So to get from here, back through there back through the glove box is not going to happen so that's another thing if you're doing it in a quattro porte make sure to get an extra set of rcas or get like a longer cable that has the 3.5 inch on one side and the male rcas on the other side i think a six foot probably even a three foot would be good this looks like it's like a one foot so probably even a three foot would be good a six foot to be safe and just coil up any extra and then you'd be able to go right from the back over through. But um, I think connection wise, everything's good. I have to just start plugging in some of this stuff to see if it works. Plug it back into the screen. Um, another thing to note, this is the dongle. So this is going to plug into the back of the control box. And then you plug in your cable for your Android phone or for your iPhone into here and then run it to where you want to run it. So some people just run it to the glove box. Um, I'm thinking I'm either going to have it just kind of tuck through the bottom and then come up here so I can just, I always rest my phone here anyways, so I can just rest my phone here. Or I don't smoke, so I don't use the ashtray. So remember I pulled out this ashtray to get to the screw. I might leave the ashtray out and drill a little hole in here so that I can pull the pull the cord through and then I'll have a place to hide it when I'm not using it. I could just wrap it up and then close it over there. But if I'm using it, just open it up and pull the cord out to about here. So a passenger could use it on this side or I could plug my phone in. So I think I might do that, but we'll see. Okay, finally plugged everything in. I'm getting this crazy screen. But if you hold down this button, It does switch to the touch screen and it is letting me get into the settings with the the little controller box here. So I'm going to go through and do the settings and see what happens. Oh, got my light on now. So it looks like its screen is working properly again because my regular my regular screen is good. Let's see if I can dial it in so you can see. There we go. So yeah, my regular screen is working again, so that's cool. But when I switch over to the other system, 
it's just saying navi and then no input that's no input you can't read it but it says no input jumping around and i'm trying pressing the home screen it's like the touch screen is not responding so i don't know i'm gonna have to do some research might have to call it quits for the night but maybe not gonna go do some research and see what i can find